Dan is in Vienna and conducted this interview. And Dan, it's interesting to hear what the oil minister from Iraq had to say, particularly in light of the comments we had from Russia towards the end of last week, where seemingly they're quite resistant to the idea of further production cuts. Absolutely, Jemana. I just wanted to jump in here with some developing news out of Vienna. I've just finished quite a lengthy conversation with Iraq's oil minister, who has explained in further detail why he believes an additional 400,000 barrel cut to production is necessary when ministers gather here in Vienna over the next two days for the OPEC meeting. Here's the first part of that conversation. Listen in. I don't say I doubt that. I think there will be oppositions by some. And... Others will support it. What was the, the final verdict? I think it's too early to say. It is very much uh, dependent on a number of, let's say, two or three main factors. One, the interests of individual countries, okay, especially the big producers. Whether those who would like to see stability and improve you know, prices, uh, and others want to maintain their share, okay, because at the end of the day, if there's additional cuts, the contribution would come, most of the contribution would come from the bigger producers. Mm. If the deal is extended either to June 2020 or perhaps out to the end of 2020, what will be the impact on the global oil market in your opinion? If it is extended to the, say, middle of the year, this is not yet, actually, a scenario was, that was studied is the first quarter. It will not be that effective. The glut, the uh, increase or in the commercial reserve will continue, and therefore uh, we don't uh, see significant uh, change. But if tomorrow OPEC Plus uh, decide to roll over the 1.2 till the end of the year, we believe, I believe also, based on the analysis, that uh, it will be more significant. Iraq's oil minister speaking to me just a short time ago. The interesting takeaway from this conversation so far is that really up until this point, the overall consensus among major producers has been that a extension of the current deal would be likely at the closeout of this OPEC meeting. That is 1.2 million barrels off the market. However, Iraq has suggested that we would perhaps see a deepening of the overall production cut in the order of about 400,000 barrels, which would bring the total cut to 1.6 million. Now, whether or not that eventuates really does remain to be seen. And as he pointed out, we do need to have consensus in the room on that on that deepening of the production cut. At the same time, though, there could be some agreement here when it comes to deepening these cuts, and that is because the likes of Saudi Arabia may actually welcome further production cuts because, of course, this is a critical time for them as well as we come into the Aramco IPO. I also asked the Iraqi oil minister whether or not the Saudis had indeed been pressuring the overall group to perhaps do more, not just deepen production cuts, but also lift compliance in order to firm up the oil market ahead of this critical IPO. Here's how he responded. We have very close relationship now between Iraq and Saudi Arabia. The present government, uh, we visited uh, Riyadh and we expanded uh, the cooperation between the two countries. I am in continuous, uh, you know, contact. He contacts me, I contact him on phone. We, ha we had conference call and so on. Uh, but I don't accept that uh, OPEC is under um, anybody. Uh, uh, OPEC is uh, a collective, you know, uh, organization. Anyone, even the smallest producer member, okay, if he if that country does not accept a resolution, there will be no resolution. So let us have the record right. Uh, we, 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 uh, I respect uh, His Highness, uh, the new Minister of Energy in Saudi Arabia, and uh, we are friends. And I know he also shares the same attitude, and uh, we would like to cooperate. We keep uh, OPEC solid, and uh, I haven't noticed any change. Policy-wise, when it comes to OPEC, uh, 
strategies, OPEC and so on, uh, you know, cuts and shares and so on. I haven't noticed any change between the two ministers. How will the Saudi Aramco IPO influence the decision-making process at this upcoming OPEC meeting? And has there been any pressure from the Saudis to perhaps do more in order to ensure that the float of that company is a success? I cannot really link it uh, to OPEC at all. Uh, I think it's an internal issue. And they have been, you know, uh, working on this uh, for several years. You remember 5% and 1% and uh, 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 delayed uh, and postponement and so on. I wish them success, okay? And of course... It's been a long time coming. This, this is part of, this is part of uh, uh, the Royal Highness, you know, the deputy to the king uh, uh, policy of, you know, opening the economy and so on. So I think it's an internal matter. I, th I, I don't see it as, uh, let us say, any um, factor or significant factor influencing their membership and their role and their attitude and so on uh, within OPEC at all. I also had the opportunity to ask the minister about the widespread anti-government protests that have been engulfing Iraq over the past few weeks. Independent reports suggest that more than 400 people have been killed as a result of those protests. And at the same time, the prime minister has now also resigned. I asked him firstly, is there a resolution to this crisis anytime soon? And also, is Iraq's oil infrastructure or production capability at risk. Listen in. They were at risk, not f as a physical, um, let us say, facility. They were not at risk of being attacked. No, the operations were at risk, like you know, stoppage, like let us say, civil unrest, trying to stop oil operation without, uh, let us say, any uh, clear thinking to what is going to be the consequences. And I was on television and I was on radio uh, explaining this to the people of Iraq, especially to the people in the South. Mm. If you stop uh, the operation, oil and gas operation in those fields, the first thing will happen to you will not have electricity. And this will affect hospitals and other, of course. And it will affect life and so on. But there were, of course, some people who, uh, you know, commented in the, you say, Facebook and others. They say, so what? We don't. <laughs> it's like this, young people. But others, of course, no, uh, actually stood uh, with us, uh, especially some, uh, you know, wise people uh, from outside the government. Uh, some tribal chiefs in the area also stood with us. And uh, there was, you know, there was wise communication and... Uh, we managed, but it was wave after wave, incident after incident, a field after another field, and so on. It wasn't easy, believe me. It was very difficult. Uh, two months, they were very difficult, yeah. So as you can see there, quite a wide-ranging discussion with Iraq's energy minister right here on CNBC, weighing in on the OPEC meeting, which gets underway tomorrow and concludes on Friday. Jamana, it's back over to you from Vienna for now.